Hey, what is up everyone? I hope all of you are doing great. And in today's question, we have two identical disks each of radius r and mass m having plate like light protrusions. Okay, so basically there are two extensions of each disk. Okay, a small spring of force constant k is fixed on the protrusion of the lower disk uh, as shown in the figure. The upper disc is given an angular velocity omega naught gently released on the lower disc. Friction is absent everywhere. Find the maximum compression of the spring and we need to find the max sorry angular velocities of the upper and the lower disc when the spring becomes relaxed again. Okay, fine. So there is no friction and uh, one upper disc is kept over the lower disc. So of course uh, the concepts here will use that angular momentum will be conserved friction is not there so total energy will also be conserved but uh, before starting this solution uh, i want to show you all a situation that we have solved um, during collision problems or in chapter of system of particles that uh, there is a block of mass m moving with a velocity v naught over a frictionless surface and there is another block of mass m which was initially at rest and a spring of spring constant k is attached to it. Initially it was in its natural length. So what happens this mass goes towards right, touches the spring, starts compression compressing the spring. As a result the spring pushes this mass towards right, tries to slow down the velocity of the of this mass and also at simultaneously increases the velocity of this mass. So, the whole system will basically share the kinetic energy that was initially possessed by this mass. So, after some time the compression of the spring will be maximum and during maximum compression of the spring velocity of both the blocks will be same okay. and that would be v naught by 2 v naught by 2 because both the blocks were having the same mass. Okay. So, to reach from this to this situation, we use the concept of momentum conservation and total energy conservation. Suppose if we consider that the total maximum compression of the spring is x naught here. So, we can just write half m v naught square equals half m v naught by 2 square times 2 plus half k x naught square. So, this is how we will conserve the total energy because this kinetic energy was initially possessed by this mass then it, it is being shared by the spring and both the blocks. Again after some time the spring increases the velocity of this mass okay, and after that it tries to decrease the velocity of this mass also. So ultimately after some time the left mass will come at rest and this whole kinetic energy will be transferred to the block at the right. Okay. So, just before coming in contact with the spring during maximum compression of the spring and just after getting detached from the spring. So, this is the whole situation and our present problem is nothing but the rotational analogy of this whole problem. Okay. So, similarly if you just uh, look at this whole assembly from the top. So, if you uh, get a top view, you would the whole system would look something like this. I have already drawn the figure so that I do not have to um, waste much of your time. Okay. So, if you see from the top, you will uh, notice that as you know that both the discs are having the same radii. So, the upper extension or the extension of the upper disc was initially having an angular velocity omega naught. Okay. So, after some time it will start compressing this spring okay. and this spring will basically increase the angular velocity of the lower uh, disc and it will also decrease the velocity of the upper disc. So, after some time both the disc will have some common angular velocity and that will be the situation for maximum compression. So, here we will use angular momentum conservation and total rotational energy conservation. So, let us see. So, initially the energy was 
possessed by the upper disc only fine later it was shared by both the disc and few of the energy was also transferred to the spring so we need to find out omega prime here okay uh, after that only we can find out the value of x naught because in our first question we need to find out the maximum compression of the spring so our next equation would be so first let us just write down this one m r square by 2 omega naught square uh, half gets cancelled out from left hand side and right hand side and m r square by 2 times 2 times omega prime square plus k x naught square okay so this 2 gets also cancelled out fine so here we have only m r square so this is our first equation so now our next equation will come from angular momentum conservation so initially the angular momentum of course with respect to the axis of the structure okay because with respect to the axis only the net torque uh, is zero so what happens here initial angular momentum is i times omega naught final angular momentum means i'm conserving in this situation and this situation final angular momentum is i times omega prime times 2 so omega prime is omega naught divided by 2 okay so we'll just put this value in the first equation we'll get mr square divided by 2 times omega naught square equals mr square omega naught square divided by 4 plus k x naught square so we have k x naught square equals to m r square omega naught square divided by 4 x naught equals to root over m r square omega naught square by 4 k okay so let us just in our solution they have written something like this so this is our maximum compression of the spring okay so in this situation the maximum compression of the spring will take place when both the angular velocities of the disks will be same uh, now the motion does not stop here the spring now starts to get uh, starts to elongate okay hence pushing the lower block increasing the angular velocity of the lower block and decreasing the angular velocity of the upper block okay so it just pushes the upper block uh, to decrease its angular velocity to zero okay and it increases the angular velocity of the lower block to omega naught just like we have seen in this situation so because the initial kinetic energy that was totally possessed by the upper block will now totally be transferred to the lower block and the upper block will come to rest okay so this happens and uh, just after this situation the spring also relaxes okay so in a for a our second question the answer would be the angular velocities of the upper block becomes omega naught and the sorry the angular velocity of the upper block becomes zero and the lower sorry upper disc becomes zero and lower disc will become omega naught okay so this is the final solution of this question i hope you all have found this video helpful and informative if you are new to this channel please do subscribe give a thumbs up if you like the video and i'll see you in the next one good luck peace